the color. Then if you've done that on clarinet, it'll be stronger, and then you can keep the violins where they are. And then your flute color, when you come in here at 17 or whatever, 17, it'll be a new color and fresher. So maybe that's the move. Or here. But good, good with the melody. Good. And a boy. Next issue. I'd have moved that to, uh, I'd have moved what's going on with the strings there, move that to another color, move that to woodwinds or something white, and bring that piano out, because you're just being betrayed by your mix here. It's a little random there, but. This is a total inside joke, and I don't get it. And I grew up in the 80s with the very first video game consoles. Okay. Fine, totally cool way to do that, but you've got it. That one, you've got to bracket. That can't come out of nowhere 15 seconds before the end. That's too much. That's, that's like something happened, you know? And, and people feel like the butt end of the joke instead of enjoying it. So you've def if you want to do that, you've got to foreshadow that. As an idea, that's super niche super kitschy. But there's something to be said for it. But definitely have to do that. However, the rest of it, spot on. Uh, spot on there with the, uh, with the development. And uh, I know everybody listened to it, followed it as you went. You have some orchestrational issues. But other than that, structurally, that's how you do that. So, and foreshadow that thing. You just can't. That sounds too different and too, that's too much of a thing. Let's see. Oh, I got a comment from uh, the, the gentleman whose very, very Zimmer-esque piece uh, got kind of, I hammered on it a little bit. And he was, uh, I don't know at what point, he, he was just asking, are we only doing Williams exercises? No, we're not. We're doing, we're, no, we have no such, we have no such biases. We're just simply examining in, 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 with, in a bubble for each one of its pieces. It's inherent ability to grab us and, and our willingness and interest in assimilating it into our uh, thing. No, no, you know, no, actually, uh, actually uh, the, uh, um, the, uh, the thing about the 8-bit thing, kitschy and all that, uh, it's, uh, uh, you know, I th no, I'm, I'm glad, we, I wouldn't want to have missed that, but because it gives us an opportunity to say, hey, if we're going that far afield, let's, uh, let's, let's definitely, definitely, definitely foreshadow that. All right, here we have a Christmas cue. A Christmas cue. Um, well, I had it here a second ago. Let's see where that is. Um, I like the sound of it. Uh, where was it? Christmas cue. Put this in there. All right, let's listen. Who doesn't like a Christmas cue? I do. Let's listen to our Christmas cue. Christmas morning surprise. Surprise is we're Jewish. Okay. Uh, what's the... Uh, and there's no presence. 
30 seconds. Okay, while that one's coming down, we'll move on to the next one. Remind me in case I forget that. Yeah, that 8-bit is really legit sounding, wasn't it? It was very legit sounding. I did, I did, I did sort of glance over the fact that that was uh, pretty legit sounding. And it warmed the cockles of my heart, and that's not a dirty word. Uh, or maybe it is. Downloading. Oh, what's come up? Okay. Let's, uh, I don't know who's, it. okay. Mo Christmas morning. Did I say that Christmas morning? Okay, here we go. This one. Says Christmas like that right away. Boy, you want chimes to be able to hold their own melodically and they don't. Too many overtones, too funky. What else you got going on there? Is that piano or something or vibes? This needs a very clear top melodic instrument. Put it with a Glock or flute in sort of bell-like tones or trumpet and bell-like tones. Draw out that melody thing because otherwise it's... Especially because you've got you're, you're fighting, you've got kind of you're you're real close to having too much going on there. I might have moved moved Celeste to a soft felt kind of Celeste sound, and then doubled chimes and glock to bring that out. Because you've got a lot of stuff in that range, it's, it was hard to figure out what was the actual thing. Mix is letting you down. However, you are doing what we were talking about in a couple of other pieces, which is when you've clearly established at the beginning a a a uh, you know the the underscore part and the time for the melody. You're bringing in the melody, but it is not strong enough, powerful enough, and so I'm I'm not. My brain and ears aren't moving right to it. <laughs> And when you're going to have, and you've done two things at once, you've, you've, you've both brought in the, the woodwind color, the clarinet on the melody, and the, the woodwinds as an answer. I would drop the woodwinds and let just the pizzicatos and or piano together do those answers so that you're not doing, and here's two new things to think about. Now give us one new thing to think about. <laughs> Second time through, this should be strings on the melody in octaves now, flowing. And then this would be adding woodwinds and or horns. Very, you're dancing around it. I think we would all be very hard pressed to be able to sing your melody back to you right now. So I think the same thing applies, which is especially something that's going right down the middle like this. You have a couple of orchestrational focus issues, but I think you really need to hammer that melody down stronger so that we can follow it um, for sure. And I can't sing it. So in almost every one of these sections, you're having a balance issue. Some of it is, is, is literally your, just your template uh, um, balance, but some of it is orchestrationally. It's a general rule when you're going to enter, you know, when, you, when you're going to bring in a new color, you know, try, to have, try not to have colors in the same family doing a different task. In other words, 
if you've suddenly now brought in trumpets as uh, as a melody, it's it's not a good idea to have some of the trumpets doing chords at the same time right around that melody. It just will they'll they'll with the, they just you'll your brain won't quite know how to f find the color. So when you brought in that woodwind, then let the other woodwind colors sit so that you can focus on that new color. And then they're ready with a, as a fresh color to be doubled with the strings as you really let that, that, that melody flow, as it should have. Somewhere in that middle place, it should have been really, really flowing. That's what all Christmas pieces are waiting for, that sort of nice, nice flowy thing. And that, that, that requires you to, to be hammering that melody pretty strongly, same sort of thing. But, you know, I guess as soon as you put sleigh bells in, it's Christmas, so we're at least halfway there. Some orchestrational issues mostly. All right, here we go. Second time through. And here comes the melody. You can do it again. Okay, it's an eight bar melody. As a melody idea, it's not very single, it's not very memorable. I think that the idea itself could use some work. But structurally perfect. B section. Okay. You ran. You ran out of steam for your idea. Okay. I'm not even going to continue because this isn't because you were in the middle of an idea and you ran out of it. And structurally, you were d doing well. We were at. We were where we expected to be and enjoying where we were. A couple of hiccups in there. Let's listen again. You should have absolutely kept that idea going. There's no reason to have stopped your momentum. You kept your, you, you, were, you were doing fine here. I would have, where you had that, that horn, just let, just let it answer with that melody that you've established. Again, don't get tired of your ideas. It was a good idea. And without it, I think that's what motivated this sort of like, you sort of reset without really needing to. I, that's where I feel like you lost a lot of momentum, was right here. Just keep going with it. And this is why I would have kept moving forward. Then you would have been naturally taken to this place. And let this continue. Let this piece finish out in that vein without feeling like you need to stop and change gears because you don't need to change gears. We haven't grown tired of that idea. And I think you could have containered it through a little bit. You have sort of this feels like a storm or something. It's a good, there's, there's some meat in there. I'd keep working that if I were you. Um, so, all right, let's see here. Uh, I just want to make sure, because a couple of you have sent second pieces in and I want to make, get the, I want to get one through everybody's piece first. Let's try this one. 
so great of you guys to share this stuff. You guys are going to believe this, but the stream isn't recording. The recording kicked out somewhere very early. Well, I guess that's just it then. Hmm. Sorry. It's OK. It's free. And look, you're getting feedback from other people, too. See, that's good. All right, let's see this one. Uh, okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's this one, I think. something equals a pattern. But not connected to anything. If you're gonna establish that, okay, then we should have heard bomb. Let it continue that pattern, otherwise don't establish it. Just let it finish. Just yeah, now it's just weird. But what I liked about it, obviously, that was one piece. I got it. I was with it. I enjoyed it. Um, little color changes. Just a little bit because as soon as you'd said that percussive stuff would have been nice to have a nice contrast. Just do that with you could have moved that to another instrument with with padded strings. So because you had a lot of the ding 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 behind it, let it in a nice pad and or move that melody to strings so it's flowing. Something in contrast. Um, that's the whole, that's the freedom of having something that clearly established is the freedom to move it around. But otherwise, you know, I dig, I dig exactly the way that that unfolded. Well done. All right, let's try this one. your little answers be derivative of your main melody. Your ideas are definitely better than your template.
colors are a touch homogenized, um, but structure is solid. I think we're all with you. You've done this. So you need another, you need another trick. You need another way to repackage this. And I'll tell you what it is. What you're doing here, I would do, because this is the second time you've done this, you've repackaged it a little bit, and it's overstaying its welcome. Here, 127. Um. Okay. I would have just stayed with that string idea, let it let it go through the whole progression melodically. Let it just do that, breathe for a second, stay, save you from having to bring in the brass, doing the melody here, and save it for the other time. You had you changed up your color and emptied it out and dumped it out very nicely there at 126, and it felt like you had to bring it right back with the brass. And the truth is that then you ended up blowing that and now it stole the thunder from the back half. Structurally, really, really nice. Um, um, your template's letting you down a little bit. This really would work much better with a real, uh, real group. You know, you did something in the beginning. That where you went to the major. should definitely be hitting on that. That's one of the sexiest. I do that all the time. It's real sexy. And it's the only time you did it that overtly. And it's, it, it lends a sparkle and a drama to your melody and your whole chord-based melody when you do that. So if I were you, I would keep that clear thing happening throughout the rest of the piece so that you're, so that you're really enjoying that we're sort of dark, but then we're major, major, which is that, you know, we just like that. You know, at some point, uh, there's no reason that 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 brass thing isn't isn't being duped with strings and octaves. There's no reason that that isn't happening as a orchestrational thing in the crescendo. But you'll be better able to do that if you haven't overstayed your welcome with the with the with the orchestrational thing by opening up the section at 126 and letting the strings just do their little. I actually use that trick exactly myself in one of my pieces. I did a a piece called the race and there's a section in the middle it was just the, the strings were the arpeggiation thing that would be underneath the melody became the melody and it moves the piece along and, and it, yet it's actually still reinforcing the idea it's a good trick it's not mine uh, good I like all that I'm such a sucker for that sound personally sucker for that sound Let's download this track and see what we think of this one. All right. Okay. Here we go. String samples are not quite helping you here. That's a 
That's a virtually random string run. Okay. Back, back, back to basics. Back to basics. I'm not locked in on your melody. I'm 40 seconds into the piece. And it doesn't take long to set a vibe, but we really, really have to make that initial statement very, very clear. Otherwise, it's just pretty chords. So. Okay, and so I'm, I'm hoping that you can hear that what we have here is, is it's not that the individual sounds aren't interesting or pleasing or don't say something. They're all consistent with each other. That's not the problem. They, we, the vibe is very clear. But the idea is not clear. What do you say? What do you, what? Yes, your, your, your vocabulary is clear, but what the fuck are you talking about? That's what we have to lock, that's what we have to lock on. And again, this is the hardest part of all of this. That's why we've seen this time and time again tonight, and why if we did this every night for a month, we'd hear this 90% of the time. This is the skill. This is the thing that makes 100,000 banned wannabes from the ones that get on you know, the charts. This is the one that 1,000 guys all have their pickup lines, but one guy gets the girl. This is the thing that, that 100,000 people write melodies, but one guy gets into your head. It's, it's, this is the, 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 the X factor, finding out the X factor, is, is, is a learnable skill, but one we really have to struggle with to, 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 to master, because it's very elusive. And these ideas about starting with a pattern, repeating it, those are, those are, that's the first idea. But you know, I, I will write things that have perfectly well-established patterns that are not memorable. So I'm getting on you about something very basic, but also very, very challenging. What I'm always encouraged by, though, is when I hear consistent vibe, because, because at least that way somewhere in your heart, somewhere in your head, somewhere in your vision, you can see and you can feel and hear the music that represents the thing you're trying to communicate, and that is, well, if you don't have that, you don't have anything. But we need to make everybody feel that. We need to make everybody see your vision. We need to make everybody feel what you're feeling, and we can't do that if we don't give them these anchors to hold on to, okay? Those string runs are, are almost random. So as a device, let's just relax on those and let's work on focusing on getting the, uh, the melody a little tighter. Um, uh, so let's see, okay, let's see what else we got here. So proud of you guys. It's scary to put your music out there like that, you know, and know you're gonna get your ass handed to you anyway. Um, um, but you know, but again, you know, uh, uh, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm just not censoring my opinion. That's all. That's all it is. You know, you're, you, the, it's the easiest thing to, well, fuck him. He doesn't know. <laughs> you, know what I mean? you can do that any time. Yeah, I didn't like what he had to say, so fuck him. Okay. But, but we are so, like, it is so hard to get somebody to say what they really think because they're afraid of upsetting you. Yeah, but, you know, that's like if you walked out with toilet paper coming out of your pants, you know, and, you're, and nobody told you. You, yes, it would suck, but you'd rather know. You know what I mean? Like, no matter how much it sucks, it sucks worse that you're walking, I didn't want to hurt your feelings. Please hurt my feelings. I look like a fucking douchebag. So that's just kind of where I come, that's kind of where I come down on, 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 on. I mean, you're, you know, like, you can always, you can always throw out the comment, but what if nobody's telling you the truth? And, 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 you know, if somebody cooks your dinner and you're eating it and you go, you know, well, that's good, it's good, it's, um, you know, it's a little, uh, no, it's a little bland, but it's good. But it's good. It's good. That's very different than. <laughs> you know, that's a totally different comment. That's like holy shit. Like, what did you? What is this? Those are different levels of criticism, and you need to know which one. If the person is 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 you know, <laughs> muscling through your dog shit food, you're like, well, I'm pretty good. You, then you'll make it again. That never serves. I am the guy. You know the trick question. Do I look fat in this dress? 
after two marriages, neither of which are successful, however, I will tell you that this was never the bad move, is, baby, considering you're not fat, you look fat as hell in that dress. Because it doesn't go well at the moment. It does not go well at the moment. There's no way out of the moment. Well, what are you saying? I'm fat. No, I'm saying you're not fat. That's the weird thing, is that somehow that fucking dress is so shitty, it makes even your skinny, hot ass look fat. But the problem is, so you have to, but later, she believes a fucking word that you have to say, because you'll tell her when a dress is fat. So you just got to think, you know, you just got to, you got to think long game. Then when you say, you look fine. Then she's all beaming because she knows you mean it because you'll tell her that she looks fat in a dress. So it's just like that. It's just the kind of thing. You just got to think one thing ahead. Yeah, okay, it sucks right now that I don't have my melodies together, but think about when I do, then I'll dominate the universe. What would you rather do, you know? Feel good now or feel good later? Okay. I think we've made it through everybody's uh, uh, first round, so let me... Uh, so let me, um, I, you know, the way I learned to m write melodies, I was seven years old. Did I ever play this song? This is the first song I wrote. This is the first song I ever wrote. Now to me, this has a melody. But my mom said I didn't. And she was very like, she was like real defiant about it. She's like, it doesn't have a melody. <laughs> which, which my mom telling me that my music sucked. And from that day forward, <laughs> I learned to write melodies because I was crushed. I was like, what do you mean it has a melody? Because da 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 da. And I think it does have a melody. I think she was wrong. But still, still, mom hammered me. She kicked my dick in at seven years old and I learned to write a fucking melody. So, you know, you never know. It's good to just put it out there. All right, let's see here. Another one from, uh, all right, let's hear it. Uh, we can go into our doubles now because we've been around the horn for everybody. everybody. Uh, all right, a very short piece. Let's hear this. It's a pattern. Bitch, give me the goddamn tonic. <laughs> you bitch. You horrible, evil bitch. All right. Um, so. <laughs> yeah, what's playing right now? <laughs> Does anybody know what's playing? Because it's appropriate. But I'm, it's not me, I swear. I have no idea where it's coming from. Um, I'm going through my... Seriously, where the fuck is that coming from? Is this somebody's piece? I guess we're listening to this. Yours. No, this is somebody else's. Okay, sorry, I didn't know what the hell that was. All right, anyway, back to that piece. Sorry, it's not kind of weird. Um, so about that, yeah, hit the tonic there, damn it. What was that? That was horrible. That was cruel. Um, <laughs> um, you know, um, I will tell you something. We've heard two of your pieces tonight, and both of them have a level of sophistication, which um, in them, which is as good an argument as can be made for 
for the kind of stuff that can rub off us, rub off on us when we're in the presence of more sophisticated music in our peers and in our listening sphere and all of that. Um, um, and in both cases, I am hearing your inherent level of sophistication exceed your control, baby, over your commercial sensibility. Let's get, let's, 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 you just, we just, if you can, why, look, just have it, have it all. Have it all, um, because you 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 know you you you're 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 making moves which are 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 betraying. I mean, there's there's a lot of sophistication in there, and and there's a lot to um, to there's a lot to be said for what you're doing. You've got such that it would be amazing if we can get you to settle down. And don't be afraid of the tonic. The tonic is how we are. Come on, don't don't. That's for sure. That bullshit. And by the way, I used to have that too. For about three years, every single piece that I entered, I'd do like this. I do. I do one, four, five. I, I, I finished every piece like that. Just I couldn't go to the tonic. I just couldn't do. I just couldn't do it. I'd have to just. Yeah, it's mystery. You don't know quite how it ended up. I had to have to be for that reason. I just can't go to the tonic. Well, people like the tonic. Go to the tonic. It's all right. It's not going to hurt you. So that's the thing. As I think is 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 you have learned well from 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 the environment that you're in is doing you well. But go find the thing that it's not giving you. Go find the go find the pop tune so that you're not afraid of the tonic and, and you don't. And you can, you can simplify a little bit. It's, that will serve you well. All right, one more piece here. At least one more piece. All right, another one here. An action cue. Action cue. This is just between you and I. Don't fucking sampled strings suck. Don't they just suck the fat hairy balls? hard to do, isn't he? It's harder than you think it is. And he's gotten lazier too. He's gotten a lot lazier. This is a lot more like his later stuff. Um, few comments on this because I know exactly what you're doing and I know why you're doing it and I don't know how you're doing it because I've been there. Um, and my, my, my essence is this, is that he's gotten lazier because he's gotten older. And, and so while you're doing a good job of dancing in and around those ideas, um, when he was working harder he had uh, more of a connection just like we've been talking about. Um, and 
And in this case, he, over the, for this kind of thing, this is where he is saved by, by a hugely wide and rich, diverse palette of orchestrational colors. And you're using a few of the really familiar ones and good ones. And, um, um, and we have a fear. This is a very sort of a throwback, sort of retro kind of quality to it. Um, I don't know what a dogfight. I assume this is an airplane thing. I just and I'm going to guess this is a period piece based on the sound of it. So um, um, it's just we have a, a real temptation to believe that without that bottom, without that, the intensity will drop out. But being able to keep the intensity inside of colors so that so that those drums and bottom ends can stay fresh, that's a huge part of what he's good at. So, um, so my only comment is just keep working on it. You need to do this and do more like this and just keep doing it um, as you are continuing to, to try to crib more of those colors. Um, but I would also, if I were you, I would uh, don't listen to the prequels, listen to the original trilogy. Go further back when he was working harder because it's better music, it's more interesting music, and it, it does a lot of less of this holding on to an ostinato stuff. Remember, a lot of what's happened in the prequels st structurally and stylistically came because he doesn't have a locked picture anymore, so he's literally got to write more of stuff that can be treading water, which is not his style, not his nature, and not what makes him brilliant. So when you're really finding yourself three, four, five, six, seven bars trading on a single thing, as you might see in any one of the Jedi battles in the prequels, that's really not the essence of the man and not the essence of what makes his stuff great. So, like I said, um, just keep, however, this is a journey that takes years and the only way that you can do it is by doing all this and keep doing it and I think that you've, uh, you know, uh, you've, you've done a really, um, you're, you're, just keep doing that. That's good. Just keep going there. Um, but, but I would, I would, I would, I would go back in time a little bit uh, for inspiration prior to 93. Um, by 93, he was willing to spend a lot more time. 93's, 91 or 93, I think it's 93's big score. I think Jurassic Park is the turning point. I think Jurassic Park is the first score that I heard of that had, um, really? Really? Were you? Because you were not. That was absolutely Williams. Um, uh, uh, because uh, Jurassic Park is the first place where some cues, like the island, he was working on, and a lot of the chase stuff with the fucking dinosaurs, he was not. It's the first time I ever heard him like half phone in a score and half really work on a score. So in terms of trying to uh, 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 Newton Howard, um, n absolutely not. This is definitely vintage la later w William stuff for sure. Um, um, although what's interesting about your comment is that. Newton Howard and later Williams have way more in common than they used to, for sure. So um, I believe you, but I will tell you that the read is knowing both of those, knowing both of their works, the read is absolutely Williams on that. There's too many devices and the harmonic stuff, too many of those polychord devices. Um, ladies and gentlemen, what a fantastic uh, opportunity to hear uh, your work and um, and uh, yeah, and you know, and by the way. Uh, one thing, let's have, let's have it said that we heard, uh, we didn't hear any shit tonight. No, we heard no shit, zero shit tonight. Uh, we heard, uh, we heard, you know, things from various, uh, various stages of needing whatever, but we've all got that. That's not news. Um, and, um, and, uh, and a wide variety of stuff. And I, and I hope that the ways in which we heard, um, you know, um, are, are, similarities in struggles, you know, is, is comforting uh, because it's just nice to know that we're all going down the same way. This is, look, we're not the first composers on the fucking block. You think we're the first ones who ever had to go through this shit? We're not. This is how it goes and this is how you learn. Um, and um, and uh, so, so I'm very privileged to have had the opportunity to hear your work and uh, I appreciate that and I hope that you found some of the comments, I mean, you know, useful. I mean, that's... Uh, Okay, um, I'm going to play something for you now. Now I'm going to play some of the stuff that I listen to. Um, I'm going to be doing a class on, uh, on jazz stuff coming up here. Um, as soon as I figure out exactly the way that I want to do that. 
Um, one of uh, the players, you know, um, j jazz is based largely on, on improvisation. And when you improv in jazz, you follow exactly the same rules generally that we've talked about tonight. There's a, you know, there's your safe chords and your chord tones and your, um, you know, your, your scales that you know will work and won't have any particular issue with them. And then you explore into deeper and more dissonant territory as you've won your audience's confidence. If you're... Okay, well, he go, every note he's going to hit is okay. At some point when you're going... Okay, the only reason that doesn't sound like a mistake is if people know that you know what the good notes are. And in jazz, as you sort of do all that, um, you, uh, you know, you, you, you lead the listener and your, your, your muscle for improving and staying inside and out of the chords is very, very strong. So I want to play you some of the people that I listen to. I got one more question. Did I, I sense something that hasn't popped up so far? Well, let's get to that before we go to, to what I'm going to play you, which is Michael Brecker. Um, I saw, this, I saw him do this piece live at Pickstiger Concert Hall at Northwestern University when I was 15 or 16 and it changed my fucking life. Um, it changed my writing and changed my improvisation stuff and I'm going to play that to you for a minute but I want to make sure we didn't leave out somebody and it appears we did. Uh, what address did it come from my friend uh, because right now I'm looking at my junk folder and I don't see anybody's that I missed. Uh, wait, whoa, whoa, a whole bunch of shit just showed up. Wait. Wait, you got more pieces? All right, we'll get to them. Um, uh, uh, okay, hold on. Yeah, I hadn't refreshed my Hotmail. Um, okay, get, uh, from a UK address. I can't tell. It's just got your name. So, all right, we'll go back and listen, but we'll take a break for a second because I want to play this piece for you. Um, this is one of my Desert Island pieces. Uh, um because it has everything that I've come to respect and love about, about music in it. Number one, it uses technology and new sounding instruments in a new and challenging way. You'll hear the piece opens with Michael Brecker, who's a sax player, with his iwi, his electronic s instrument. It's a, you know, it's a MIDI, it's like a MIDI, it's a MIDI press controller. It's like an early, you know, a, and a harmonizer playing it's really like out there and wild and sort of circusy, and I didn't know what to make of it, and I saw him do it live and whatever. And it goes into this tune that is, that is based on um, an absolutely dead simple melody over and over and over and over again, upon which he then improvises, and Pat Metheny improvises, and Kenny Kirkland improvises, increasingly out and sexy um, solos before finally returning, in my mind, sort of triumphantly to this simple melody and then a bracketing of the sound that he starts the piece with. It is literally one of my favorite pieces I I've ever heard in my life. It's very, I mean, part of it is because the, the actual chord progression, apart from being dead-ass simple, also has some of my favorite stuff in it. Um, but, but, the, uh, the, but I just have to play this piece for you because it's a great piece and, and, I, and something I've listened to a million times and learned a lot from because of the journey that I went through listening to it where I was skeptical of it and I didn't like it or didn't understand it and didn't know and then I figured out that it was all intentional and in control and it drew me in and then play, it's a fantastic piece, it really is. It's called Original Rays, it's by Michael Brecker. Check this out.
Jack Dijonette is the drummer. You know, um, the thing about jazz is, you know, it's it's uh, it's not the every man's music. Uh, um, it's uh, uh, it's really not. It's uh, it, it plays in territories and in ways that are in, are more. I mean, my mom couldn't get into this tune, um, and yet for me, um, there's so much for us to mine from a piece like that, from the exploratory and bold use of new technologies, which we're, of course we do as part of sound design and plug-in development and all that stuff, um, to the fact that, you know, that with a strong and predictable underpinning, there's almost limitless, you know, uh, musical freedom to, to, to speak. Uh, Pat Metheny is a very melodic, Soloist. Pa uh, Michael Brecker is a melodic soloist. Uh, Pat Metheny's uh, usual, um, one of my favorite pianists of all time, Lyle Mays, very melodic soloist. And it's the advantage of studying jazz is that you are spending your life and your time and your energy honing the muscle for 
improv, improving, which is essentially like writing melodies and knowing when you're in and when you're out. And what Original Rays is, as over the course of its nine minutes, is a, is a study in when it's in and when it's out. And, and we do that. I mean, that's the template for what we should be doing in all of our pieces. When are we in and when are we out? When are we doing what is predictable and understandable and, and, and comfortable for our, for our audience? And when are we taking them someplace different? Casey, have a good night. Thanks for staying with us. Um, so I just wanted to play that because it was a really, really important piece for me. I mean, some of it too was you know, seeing it live. But it, it, um, it was a piece that, um, you know, that, that had, it was the first time I'd ever heard something that seemed to me to be way, like way out in the sort of like exploration zone, but also had so grounded with that simple progression. I mean, it just, it just, it just, it was just like, wow. And all of this could be built on that and built around it. And I saw that as a, as a very, as a, you know, as a literal allegory, as a metaphor for how all m music that's effective is. Is, is it, there's boundless creativity and exploration and out available to you if, if the underpinnings are solid. And if there's one thing that we've talked about tonight, it's that simple um, underpinning. And if there's one truth, uh, to be gleaned from all this, it's that it's that that is the common vocabulary and and uh, and language that that we all speak as Westerners. Certainly, we all have some chord progressions and some some uh, stylistic things that we're used to, and and we are always better served to know how to control that and be able to control that. And when you can do, you can do nine minutes of F sharp over F, and it works. It's fascinating and sexy. Um, okay, let's get back to some of the uh, other pieces that have come in. Let me refresh my, you know, isn't it fucked up that every one of your things came in my junk mail? You know, it's easy, easy hot mail. All right. Uh, boy, I still feel like I'm missing somebody's piece here. See, because it doesn't show me your email address, it shows me your name. So I'm just going to go through there. So if, there's a, if, you're, if your piece has a title, let me know. But let's go in here and I'm just going to keep going through my list. And let's click on this one and see. This is a 30 second. Oh, oh yeah, okay. You're welcome for the review. You're absolutely, you're absolutely welcome. It is my honor and my privilege to be able to, uh, to say anything. Uh, um, You know, I mean, to, to be able to, to give you my two cents on it. And who the fuck knows? I mean, you know, you, my, my, my feedback is only as valuable as... I mean, I guess isn't that how you work? Is, you know, you have some opinion about my music, right? Because isn't that where you put your money where your mouth is? Isn't that how you determine if your teacher has anything to say? Yeah, what do you do? Um, you know, and uh, uh, so, you know, I mean, I think if you listen to my own work and you think, well, this all sucks, then maybe you shouldn't listen to a word of it because that's definitely what's guiding my work. But if you think there's anything in there, then I guess you should. I mean, I don't know. It takes all kinds to make a world. And I, and I uh, but, um, but, you, you know, the only reason I have the fucking gall, the balls to even be able to comment on people's pieces is because in, on, when the rubber meets the road, when it really comes down to it, I jumped in the ring as a professional musician with big stars in my eyes. I was 20 years old. I'm 41. I'll be 42. And I've paid my bills every day since. So, so, some, so, so on some level, you know, um, um, whatever I do, I figured out how at least to do the kind of work that people will pay me for and I can raise a son with and I can have a decent life with. And, and while that is certainly no measure of quality, um, uh, you know, um, it's uh, it's at least it's at least some some benchmark, some bellwether of of, of you know of what people will buy, what people will pay for, what people like, and I and I and I think that a commercial uh, skill is important to have. We can always go off the deep end and write stuff exploratory, but can you connect with every the every person, the person at the drive-through McDonald's right now who doesn't listen to anything other than? Miley Cyrus, can you connect with them? Because you should be able to. And if you make the choice not to, fine, but be able to, be able to. 
somehow there's a there's an important skill in there, and that I have been able to do. Um, so uh, you know that's the only place. It's a very I'll, I'll trust me when I tell you it is a humble place. I'm I do not think that I'm like the next thing. Trust me. Trust me. Let's try this piece here. Hello. Sorry, I'm just getting to it. Give me one second. Okay. <laughs> Somehow I'm already thinking Stu Phillips in a way that I like. <laughs> Do just a little earlier. Same criticism applies. Um, 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 if you're going to be doing a fanfare esque thing, really make that fanfare clear and keep hammering it on hammering on it because uh, right now right now th 43 seconds into it I have an impression of it I mean a, a, an impression of it but it's not inside I can't now take this to my girlfriend and sing it to her there's something important about that okay So you're fighting a little bit here with yourself. So second, this is a new piece. Same thing, brother. Same thing. You've got a lot of vibe in there. And this is a sexy vibe. This is one of my favorite vibes ever. Um, um, but don't be afraid to let this idea be as long as you can sustain it, as clear as you can make it. If this piece is 119, then make it 119 and call it a day. Um, but it's the same thing. Let's simplify and really, if that's, and make the idea the idea. Because otherwise, this doesn't really mean anything. Do you understand? It's it's a good sound, but it's not a good speech. Yeah, and, and this is really not connected to what you've done before. And I don't blame you. Because if you don't have that kind of faith in your idea, then what else are you going to do? You are going to move on. You are going to go to other places. I would too. Same criticism applies. Stay on your idea. You have a very, in both of these cases, this Conquistador piece is very different from your other Zimmeresque piece. What this tells me is that as a composer and as a person, you have a very good mimicry sense. You have a very good sense for what the essence of the vibe is. This is not to be underestimated, but to make it yours, we need to be getting these simple ideas that are inherently and instinctively and, 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 and undeniably you and really letting, letting them stand and develop on their own. Okay? So, um, so you have a good chameleon's sense, but, 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 but let's do less. Let's do less and stay focused on, 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 on making a clearer statement. For sure. That's what you need. Some people don't know how to get to the sound at all. You know how to get to the sound. So celebrate that. But let's simplify. All right. Let's have another one here. 
It's so fascinating. These pieces are just fascinating to me. Just to see you guys going through, I mean, I don't mean to be, but I, 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 I lived this. I lived all of these challenges, and I had nobody to tell me what was up. And, um, and I remember them, and I have many shitty, shitty pieces to prove it. Percussive instrument, like a harp, does not have the sustain that we think it does. It's almost always a good idea to have that harp doubled with a um, sordino strings or something. But if you're going to have it be by itself, you're not actually adding to its sustainability with a celeste. Maybe with vibes ringing. But what you've done here, we're like, and now we'll add the th is not actually, is not actually taking the lightning the curse any. In fact, what you've done instead is you've added two colors on top of one, and I'm not sure what to focus on. Let this should have been. Let this just be clarinet. Because you know you just because the, the celeste and the harp are fighting each other. They're both percussive instruments. statement clearer it's, because I'm starting to wonder I'm not sure what you mean right now this last bit that statement should have been very clearly tied to the opening so that I know that I'm you're still I'm still with you and you're still with me okay okay so an orchestrational adjustment there and again keep that idea strong keep that idea Keep it idea. There, 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 there. Um, let me see. You know, I, I've been talking a big game. Do I have? Let me just let me just take a second and see. I think I've done something. This is this is always the most pretentious part of the night, but. Um, um, let me show you how I would do it. But th there's something to be said for it. Um, do I have this in here? I'm looking for a, um, I had written this, uh, it was the same sort of thing. I'd done this for this television series, what was it called? Um, where I had to take a simple idea and milk it. It was for a dance number. Um, it was called, it was a tango. Let me see if I can find it. And as just an example of, because this is where I'm coming from, is, is when, when, for myself, when I'm thinking about how do you take an idea and sustain it for, you know, however long, and it's the same idea repackaged and repackaged, um, I know I've had, to, I've had to do this countless times in my career, and it's, it's a, it's a, Important. It's just an important skill to have. Let me just look and see if I have a. Uh, here it is. Um, this was a. Um, let me just play this for you before we go on. I, again, I apologize, but I just I think this is this is a good idea. I think. Um, this was a, a piece for this again this TV series. And it was a tango, and it was based on a very simple idea, on a pretty shitty template. But, I want, but what you will hear is exactly what I'm talking about, an establishment of an idea, and we're just going to milk the shit out of it.
that's the idea. Twice. A little decoration. B section. Hear the melody, hear the rhythm echoing the first rhythm. Twice of everything, three times, decorated. A. Repurposing here. This is the B section. So, as a, I'm sure that that piece, whatever whatever you feel about the strength of the idea, there there's no way you don't feel the cohesion of the presentation, um, because it, it because that I didn't invent. All I did was f sort of follow the the leader on that, but but to a Western ear, structurally and f formatically, that's very very familiar and comfortable. And, and it allows for that melody to get in your head and to stay with you. And we can debate the merits and the strength of the idea itself. But, but, the, but when you serve things up in a particular way, then at least it, it's like, a, it's like the, the lube and the grease and the to shoehorn to get it in there. And there was two ideas in that whole piece. That's all there were, were two ideas repeated over and over and over again and decorated and decorated. So, and I could have gone on for another 20 minutes, which is why I recommend doing exercises on simple things like nursery rhymes and Star Spangled Banner and Happy Birthday and all the rest of that shit because at least that way when that stuff is done for you, then you can focus on this other part. And we just cannot become masters of this enough um, in terms, of, we just can't be. I mean, as composers, this is kind of our job. You know, uh, 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 we don't want to just make transient, fleeting connections with people at mass on Sunday. 
we, we, we want them to, to, to bring what we, our stories into their life, just the way that a, 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 cer a person who creates a meme wants it to be forwarded on the internet. Why is it being forwarded? Because I, I like it and I agree with it in here. We, it's the exact same thing. And so, 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 so this is why I keep hammering this point. Um, was that violin real? No, you know what that was? I'm 90% sure that was just the, that was the Lass violin. I'm pretty sure that was Lass uh, uh, um, solo violin. Um, so, uh, but anyway, again, I, I, you know, I, 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 I play the piece uh, uh, to just to, just so you know that I at least take my own advice. And, you know, and, and, and even now listening back to it where I have a lot of issues with the piece itself, um, the structure is tight. It's just tight. It's, that's the way to serve it. And so, so that's the place that my critiques of your work is coming from is like, you know, is it getting in there? Is it getting into my mom's head? Because if it's not, let's get in there. And then if we choose not to, let's make that a choice. But right now a lot of us are just dancing around whether we really have a say in that or not for a lot of reasons. Here we go, another one. We're having a mix issue that needs to come out more. Perfect. Do that melody again. Okay, do that melody again. Is it the same melody? I'm not sure. This at least is the same sort of thing. Stay, keep them together now. I'm not sure that was the same melody. However, you'll see that this change is okay because at least there's enough of a connection between what's going on that we're ready for something like this. You didn't need to wait. Get this back in there. Come on. Do your melody. Okay, all right, now I'm sure of it. Now I'm sure we have three melodies and you, you have more faith in yourself. You were really, really, it was a nice thing. Just take us home. Take us home. piece will jump 10 percent, 20, 30 percent in quality when you really connect all of those melodies together. Um, um, a lot of strength in these in the structure there. A little, you, you just don't have quite enough faith in your ideas. G keep that going. That would have been a home run there. It's nice. It's nice. It's nice. And I like the, uh, you know, I like everything positive. I'm from the 80s, so positive stuff makes me, uh, I like positive stuff. I'm from the 80s, where everything was positive. Everything was about the power and the glory. You can be anything you want to be. All right, what do we got here? Let's listen again. Let's see what we got on this piece. Oh, I'm, I'm loving hearing these pieces. I do, I'm such a sucker for Christmas music. Good, good, good melody. Simplify just a little, a little bit more. Just a little more. Mm -hmm. 
you, 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 you simplify your melody just a little bit. That's all I'm going to say. Just simplify just a little bit. Goldsmith would. Had a boy. Perfect. 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 Good, 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 good. There's a lot, good. That, that was exactly the way to handle that. Um, just simplify just a little bit. Just simplify a little bit. Just simplify a little bit. You know, sometimes we just make a little more of them than we need to. All right. Let's see what we got here. All right, let's listen. Ooh, this should be good. Because I know this composer. Let me put it this way. This, this template should sound pretty fucking badass. I don't know about the piece. <laughs> hundred percent sure on what the thing is. Some of this is just being let down by the samples, but I think this needs to be clear more those two ideas need to be more clearly echoes of each other so that we can then feel like this is a wrap up because I didn't feel that right yet. Uh, you are missing a little glue. You're missing a little glue here. Um, orchestrationally. You're, you're just... got it. You got it. You know how to move this stuff around. We need you to lock in on that thing a little bit more. Um, you spent a lot of interest, you've spent a lot of your time and your energy on your sounds and on your orchestrational colors. Same thing. A little, little stronger on this. I can't tell you how long this piece is going to be. I mean, without looking, I'm not sure where I am. I can't re, I can't recount anything that's happened yet. And I'm a musician. Now that's just... Now this is, by the way, this may be a philosophical point. Um, uh, uh, some people may think that there's, some people may have argue, ar argument or issue with the idea that there's a, um, that you know, things need to be inherently singable or, or memorable or... But what you can't argue with is that Singability, hummability, internalization, um, it, it either happens or it doesn't. And when it happens, then the people have absorbed your music and take it with them and now you're a part of their souls and a part of their lives. So if you don't do that, it doesn't mean that they won't enjoy it uh, and leave great comments. but. We want to aim a little bit higher than that. We want to become part of that person's life. Even if they don't know us and don't know who we are, we want to be permanently a part of the definition of who they are for the rest of their lives because they've, 
been changed and absorbed and consciously relive and revisit the work that we've presented to them. That's a very, that's maybe the most powerful, maybe the most intimate contact that we have between human beings and we are fortunate enough as musicians to have the ability to do that. When our music gets into somebody's life and they are singing it in the shower and they are naked and they don't even realize they're doing it, that is a profound connection that has been made between us and a complete and total stranger. And it transcends and excels and goes way past any one of those fortune cookie sentiments about one life, one piece, one world. Fuck that. That's just stuff that people write in, you know, on, on, on posters. But when somebody that you don't know is singing your music and they don't even mean to be, you have penetrated the deepest areas of their soul and their lives and they're carrying it around. You and that person are connected in a way that sex couldn't connect you. It's very, very powerful. So I think as a, as a, as a goal, uh, it's a laudable one. It's a, it's a potent one. And it's a privileged one that we have any opportunity to do that. So that's why I hammer this stuff through. It's not because your stuff isn't pretty, it's beautiful and your template sounds fucking great. But right now, even me as an accomplished musician couldn't recount what's happened. And if I can't, your average naked person in the shower probably can't, okay? <laughs> Template's great. It's amazing how much you dance around locking it in. You're always very close, but not locking it in. And you've got a lot of power, and you have a lot of range, a lot of good sensibility. Please rein this in. Please, please rein this in. You've got a, a great dramatic sensibility. You're a good storyteller. Um, your style is sexy. Let's really, really, really get you quotable. Let's get you quotable. Okay? Keep working on it. Simplify. This, is, this evades us for forever. All right. Let's see. My template, template doesn't sound anywhere near as good as that. All right. Mix is unbalanced, more horny. I've lost your melody. I'm not sure who has it. That's a mix issue. Structure is correct. We have an orchestration and or mix issue. Good structure. Good structure. ending for that kind of piece. However, your structure is good. But you know what the problem is? I'm going to tell everybody, and they're not going to believe this, this is, a, this is a Christmas kind of thing. This is about Santa Claus. Now, 
It doesn't sound like Santa Claus. And, I mean, it sounds good. It's got heroic qualities to it. And again, the director may not have wanted that. And blah, 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 blah. However, that's also part of our job. It's just nailing the aesthetic right from the beginning that no matter what, your brain goes Santa Claus. It's got to. That's orchestrational only. So it's just something to keep track of. And, and uh, you know, and fighting through uh, idiot uh, directors and producers' uh, sensibilities is part of our job. All right, let's hear this piece. I like the structure a lot. That would have been like at least three times sexier with live instruments. That's exactly the kind of piece that gets let down by, by samples, so don't worry about it. on your endings um, also just I'm just this is just a, this is a cheap shot but that would have been better with a children's choir and I think you know that and didn't have access to it and didn't need it because of blah, 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 blah. however you know uh, if you'd run that another 10 seconds everybody would be singing that on their way out so nice that's got a lot more of the essence to it that I keep so this is a thing right where SoundCloud will just play somebody else's thing anyway um, again, what I like, I like patterns, I like repeatability, I like a thing in there, a very, a very clear vibe. We can argue about the vibe, but the vibe is clear. And with a, with a slightly different take in the orchestration, that is children's voices, that probably, we'd probably hate you in an hour for all the right reasons. No, that's true. That's very simpler. That's very simple. That's true. That's true. It's as simple as so. I mean, God, I can't tell you how many. Uh, most of my time, my practice time, when nobody's around and I'm by myself in the piano, is very, very simple. It's very simple. I know how to fly off into the zone, but can I, can I get into the thing? I can't tell you how often I write a melody. I think, that was so great. And I listen the next day, I'm like, this is shit. I can't even hum that now. It happens all the time. I'll never get over that. Uh, and we never will. It's the hardest part. But it's, uh, it's the most important part. I don't know what I'm hearing right now. I'm sorry. Oh. Just do that again. I'm sorry, it just restarted for some reason. I mean, your, your piano sample is a little letting you down. You need to have the melody continuing and then have this be a decoration on top. That's just, that's just how you do it. Which makes it very hard to do all on piano. You have to have four hands. But maybe it's a piece for four hands. Well, you are having other instruments. Well, then for sure move that melody to a different instrument so that you can continue the melody and have the decoration with something else. But otherwise,
Okay, so same thing. Mike, um, vibe is good. The development is fine. Keep us locked in on that melody, especially for a piece that's shorter like that. For sure. Same thing. We've heard this. This is our biggest challenge. We overthink. We overthink. We overcomplexify. Complexi I'll use that word. I can make that word up if I want. And we, um, we, uh, we, uh, we, um, we make more of it than it needs to be. And we need to continually stay connected to our audience and our audience are you know, simpletons. Um, there's a lot more of them than there are of us. And um, again, any one of the exploratory, you know, deep places that you want to go with your music um, is only strengthened by your ability to control the level at which you can connect with the everyman who isn't particularly interested in your music. And, uh, you know, and there's a lot of ways of getting there, but there's no, there's no better or more cohesive way than structurally. So, wow, lots of great, lots of great, uh, are those your sisters? No money, right. I think no money and your three sisters singing is a fantastic way to go. Um, and, you know, and, uh, and plus, you know, your, the work that you've uh, 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 played for us tonight, the work that we've heard of yours for tonight, uh, you know, definitely has an extra little something to it just by virtue of the fact that there's real people in it. There's air around them and performances around them. And we spend a lot of time trying to get our performances. I mean, I heard a few people tonight have good ideas that were really, really let down by, by samples, and that's the nature of samples. And we're fooling ourselves to think it's any other way. Um, so, uh, so I don't want us to spend too much time on the samples. I'd rather spend, the structure is tight. Look, that piece I played for you, the samples, right? I mean, the violin. You know, the violin's performance. I mean, I work very hard on my performance. I work on the fucking, you know, I, 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 I really perform the shit out of it. But, I mean, if I brought Roger Wilkie here in two seconds, I mean, it would be like, blow that away, you know what I mean? So, I mean, you know, we, I, I mean, that's this, that now we're in editorial land. Now we're in the point where I just think, like, let's just not spend too much time on this fucking technology because you can spend all fucking year on it building your template amazing. And it still isn't shit compared to the real people. So let's just take it easy with that. But, you know, well, for some people, it's, uh, you know, that's the thing that's separating them from not getting the job or getting the job. So, anyway, um, let's see where we are on. Um, I haven't checked in a while. See how many of us are left. There may not be many of us left. 47? There's 47 fucking people online right now. No kidding. Well, good. Um, okay. Thanks, first of all, for everybody who submitted your pieces. I will do this a lot more. If you're going to submit your pieces like that for review for us all to learn, you bet your ass I'll do a lot more of that. Um, and won't charge you a fucking dime on it because, uh, because uh, nothing is sexier than uh, a community of people getting better at what they do and being able to communicate and being able to connect with people and having increased power and, all, and relevance and all the rest of that. Um, this is where I tie this into the first part of the, of the night. Be because in the end, there is a whole shitload of music that is being produced right now that is utterly disposable and utterly for, uh, uh, um, forgettable and not going to transform the world and not going to teach us anything and is taking money away and places, you know, spots of opportunity away. And it's a fair world. I, I, good, bring it on. But all of that is happening. And there has, that is the entropy field. Um, and, and um, you know, and we, we, we are, we're all that's standing between that and, and having anybody do anything and have it be considered and have it box out music for music. That's just a fact. That's just a fact. I mean, I don't... Uh, that's just a fact of it. And we don't, there's, I don't complain about it because I think it's a... Because I, you know, that to me is just the weakest sauce. Now, it's not fair because they have... Shut up. What do you want? You can compete. You're not Jewish. So what? Uh, uh, there's a truth that nobody talks about. You know, uh, Hollywood is primarily run by Jews. Jews. 
And they stick together, those Jews. You know, they do that. They do that. Somebody in this world should stick to fucking together. At least the Jews do. They take care of each other. Do you know I've been in executive boardrooms? I mean, I'm talking about top executive boardrooms at the biggest studios where they thought I was Jewish, and I heard stuff that if I wasn't Jewish would make people tear their fucking teeth out. I've heard stuff. I've heard it happen. And I used to, wa I used to go down to the Jerry's Famous Deli and get a Reuben sandwich and read the Jewish Journal and read about how in the background we should stay Jewish and we should only marry Jews and... You know, you know, stuff that it was in a, it was read, read like out of a KKK manual. It was only it was Jewish. You know, and the truth is, some people hate Jews for that. I love Jews for that. I think that's great that there's anybody in this world that sticks together. At least they take care of each other. At least they watch out for each other. At least they're, there's somebody's got each other's back. But there's a truth about Hollywood, about the power, about the power uh, uh, structure that people will not talk about because they're, they're, they're afraid that if they start suggesting that there's anything like that in a Jewish community, that they're anti-Semitic and they hate Jews. Whereas I personally think it's a, it's a pretty admirable quality. I mean, they're taking care of each other. And everybody gets boxed out at some point. You're black, you've been boxed out by white people. You're not the handsomest dude in the bar. You've been boxed out by a better looking dude who gets the hotter looking chick. We all get boxed out at some point. But the point is that, that that, that in any of this, we have to be able to look a little bit with harsh reality at, at, at the world that we're working in and the world that we're living in and make choices about what we're going to do, whether it's fair or not. Fair has nothing to do with it. If you work in Hollywood, want to you know, make money in Hollywood, um, you have to make some very, very hard decisions about what you want to spend your energy on. And networking is absolutely uh, one of the ways. And you probably can't do it if you hate Jews. I hate to tell you that, but there's, it's all Jews, so you better learn to love them. And if you hate black people, well, fuck you anyway. So you have to kind of, you have to kind of, you have to kind of know, you just have to be real. There's just got to be truth. And that's the truth about the music that you produce, the business that you work in, the people, the feedback that you can listen to, the skills that you fo uh, focus on. There's, we're not helping each other by not looking at things like that, by not looking at our skills, by not subjecting it to uh, criticism. We're not helping each other by telling ourselves that we're good when we're not. We're not helping each other by, you know, dismissing our lack of commercial appeal by saying, well, people don't know good music. None of this is helping us. We, we, we absolutely need to, um, to, to cultivate our humility for the, for the good fortune that you get if you have a life in this business at all with some of the economic realities some of the political realities some of the the discrimination realities i mean these are these are truths everybody else in the world faces them why would we as composers be exempt to them you think that you can uh, you think that you, that you can be an unpleasant person and not fun to be with or fun to have a drink with or fun to talk to and work? Well, you won't. Because a lot of people will hire people just based on how fun you are. You think you can be anti-Semitic or racist and work? Well, you won't because there's no shortage of Jews and blacks and gay people in the business. And if, you're, if you have all those problems, well, they're going to box you out and you probably deserve it. We, they're, 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 but, but we also need to be able with... Um, with, uh, with confidence to, to, and, and honesty to tackle all of the realities of this life that we've chosen. Right, this is like Springer's final thought. This is like that. It's like that. But I've worked in this town, and I've been in this town 20 years, and I've seen it all happen, and I've, I've said this before. My wife is a celebrity. My son is, therefore, the son of a celebrity. And fair or not, my son could have a starring role on a television series as soon as he wants it simply by virtue of that, and that's a fact, and that is not fair, and he might not even deserve it, but for everybody else who's coming in the business, you, you, you can't simply decry that. You have to have a plan for what you're going to do about it. You know, uh, 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 um, um, and how, how you're gonna tackle that. Are you gonna tackle that through your talent? You're gonna tackle that through networking? You're gonna tackle that through your personality? Hopefully it's a combination of all of that. None of this. We're not making a, any headway in art, in society, or in our business if we're not looking at the truth. So, 
So yeah, I mean, I have seen things get stead of steadily worse in the last 20 years, and that's a fact and nobody will ever tell me otherwise. Um, and um, and uh, my answer to that is, well, you know, um, don't be part of that. I mean, you know, every day they, I mean, I've been in, look, I've just, I've been an audio technician on famous bands who have access to the live mics that are on while they're on stage. And I can hear the raw tracks and they're ridiculous and insane and people can't sing. And, and I work in visual effects when, so I'm hearing things from musicians and by musicians when people don't know I'm a musician that's offensive and ridiculous and horrible and people are making millions of dollars on it. There's no, nobody will ever tell me that things aren't getting worse. But what are you going to do? Are you going to sit around and bitch in my day? Yeah, in your day. But what about now? What are you doing? And um, in the end, I think we, you know, we're either part of the problem and part of the solution. And if you, you, you know, if you're, if you're, if you're not trying to uh, grow and change and absorb and adopt and teach, then you're part of the problem. That's just it. So, um, and, and you can't do any of that if you're not real about the situation. You can't do any of that if you're not real about where you are in your skill set. And you may not be as good as you wish you are, but damn it, you can be. We just have to study and work and be able to hear criticisms, and we have to do all that. And that's just, that's just what it is. And that's true in your relationship, too. And that's true with, uh, I know we're looping, but that's the truth in, when you have a woman in your life and you have to say, look, I, 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 this is more important tonight than you. You know, that's a true statement sometimes. And the woman or the guy that you're with will go, okay, I get that. Or she doesn't get that, or he doesn't get that, and then they're not the right person. We're, we're not getting anywhere without some more of that. That's just, that's just the fact of it. So, um, any other pieces, uh, let me know. But otherwise, um, you know, we're, uh, we're coming up on, uh, what, five hours, which is... What do we do these things? Six hours? I just sit here and blather for six hours. First of all, uh, however, let me do thank you again for everything that um, you guys put up because we learned a lot tonight. A everybody learned from every piece that was put up tonight. And I think especially at the point at which we all have things in common. Um, I, I would recommend a balance. I would recommend have a good stable of people in your life that will say things that you want to hear so that you don't collapse under the weight of your own, um, you know, insecurities. Uh, you know, I, I mean, having been with a, a celebrity for 12 years, you know, there was times, and I don't want to say too much here, but, you know, if you're not feeling good about yourself and your celebrity, it's not hard to feel good about yourself. There's places you can go and things you can do and people will lavish praise on you. And you, Yeah, I'm okay. I think there's something really important about that, about having your audience that loves everything you do and everything you have to say. Um, by the same token, for us to get better, we, we, we need to have the, <laughs> we need to have the brutal. A brutal reality, sometimes handed to us. Yeah, your ass looks fat in that dress. You, sometimes we need that. Um, so I just and uh, you know, and if we really want to get better, that's it. There's a, uh, there's. Um, I think what we, but I actually think that we turn away from criticisms like that when we think it's just for its own. Uh, when it's own for its own sake, I think we turn on people like a Simon Cowell. Or, or people who, um, you know, just, just shit on us. Just, and you can sense that it's just they like that and they get off on that and they don't have anything. It's just like, well, you suck. You know, versus somebody who we have the, we think is actually interested in any way about our fate and cares about us at all and is telling us about the mustard on our lip because they don't want us to look like a douchebag, but they love us. And that's a much more, let's have more of that. Um, I haven't been my, by your piece yet. We are getting to this piece. A-H. How am I missing this? This is insane. I do not see a piece. Okay. 
this is now this is starting to piss me off. How could I have possibly missed a piece? I'm looking through my whole list. All right, I tell you what. Uh, you send that piece one more time and put in the put in the in the to m verta m v e r t a three at hotmail.com and put in the subject uh, um, anything. Just put put listen to this. Try this one more time. We're going to hear this piece before we uh, before we go because this is bumming me out that anybody's not had their piece when I've been going through this list. Um, otherwise, for everybody else, you know, you guys, I know they're all over the world and they're all over time zones. Go to sleep. Have a good rest of your Friday night. Don't worry. We will do this. Uh, we will do this again, I promise, especially because I didn't record it and I said I would. It kicked out at some point. I don't know when it would. But you know what? That's what you get for free. Um, and I, and I, do think that this is, uh, I do think that this is really useful for all of us to get better and to, and to build a community. Um, you know, and I, I mean, I'm, I'm wired a little different. I really like, like if I have a trainer or a teacher, I, I like to get my ass handed to me. Just bru because if I believe that it's coming from the real place, I much prefer, I much prefer a person who is straight shooter and, and not than somebody who will say the like when somebody qualifies their opinion like when they say look you know I, this is just me and I know I don't speak for everybody and I mean your experience might be different and I don't mean to offend you in any way and and you don't have to listen to a word of this it's just it's just this I have to tell you how I feel and feel free to I'm like just get to a fucking just get to it just get to it I, I just have to, I just you know and I'm not meaning to say anything I don't want to upset you and this doesn't mean that you do it. what your piece sucks the balls. Thank you, thank you. Let's get there. Let's start, let's start with that. Okay. So you think the piece? I do. I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, but I do. Good, good. That's just uh, that. Like we should start with that. Um, because you're not saying it to hurt me. You're saying it. That's you know. So yeah, I know it didn't get recorded. I know it's such a bummer. But whatever, whatever. There'll be plenty more of this. Um, um. So I'm going to keep looking for this piece because we now we have to hear this piece because apparently this piece has been due all night. Um, and I did not have this growing up. I did not have an objective ear on my piece as, um, and, and as such, uh, uh, I thought I was a lot better than I actually was. And it didn't help that I got my first record deal at 20 because, 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 that to me was like, well, of course I did. Like, like you know, I just thought I was, I was such an arrogant little fuck. And, um, and I thought I just had the whole world clocked and I had it all figured out. And I did not in any way. Um, and it probably would have been better for me to learn earlier, but there was nobody around really, there was nobody really around, uh, you know. I remember reading that J&H told H.D. that piece is not worthy of you, and he was glad to hear it. Well, if you're Hans Zimmer and you have people just eh, licking your ass all day long, truth is real hard to come by. So at least somebody who's anywhere, I bet he did, was happy to hear that just because nobody says anything like, who says to Hans Zimmer, yeah, that's, uh, that's fucking ass. Well, you know what? Some of the stuff he writes is ass. It just is. He's only fucking human and nobody will, oh, it's brilliant. You need people like that. Otherwise, you start to believe your own you get this I okay all right here we got a piece I got it we're gonna listen to this right now phone action.
There's qualities of it. Remind me of one of my favorite scores. Silly, it's a guilty pleasure. It's the score to The Hidden with <laughs> Kyle McLaughlin. <laughs> uh, just is. Um, real super atmospheric. Like, how do you kind of, like, when you're deliberately trying to put space and put atmosphere. And, you know, and, the, and you really haven't started yet until. Da, dee, da. Gotta do that again or something. Even here. It becomes all the more imperative inside of that a amorphous goo. It becomes all the more important to give us something, something to lock on to. Per personally, I happen to like that sort of flowy space thing. But I, I, same, th same, same thing, at the end, the bottom line is at the end of whatever that is, 48 seconds, I couldn't take your piece with me. This has got to be the thing by which, by which we judge our work. So, um, so if you're going to do something that simple, do it twice. Just do it twice and then it's in our head. Even if it's the same rhythm, even if it's the same intervallic motion, do the same thing twice so that inside of all of that interest we can flow. And this piece, this, this thing that I'm thinking about, the uh, score to the hidden has all that all over it, and same sort of thing. Um, so very, so, so, that's, so that's the thing. Simplify and repeat that idea. Give me two of something so that I can, I can lock on to it. All right, let's see what we got else. We've got a couple more pieces came in here, so let's see here. Mm. Oh, somebody sent a tango. Somebody said, I will see your tango and raise you a tango. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, okay. This, uh, your, uh, I love the color, it needs to be a little more lyrical because it is playing a role that's a little bit, a little bit uh, chordal. Go ahead and, and, and let this be a little bit lyrical. What a fantastic and unused color. Let it, let it do something. Especially with something so simple in your chord progressions. Here again, your mix balance is fighting you a little bit. I'm not sure who's the melody. Who should I be listening to? When I really should be being drawn toward your lower strings, if that's what you're going to have as a melody. That's just a mix issue. We are not trading on a melody that's been established. It is the hardest thing for us to know how others hear our music. But that's what's going on here is, is you're clear on where the focus is. I am not clear. And I can't take this with me. And yet the structure on, uh, underneath of it is solid.
So, and this, this is just, we, man, we all suffer under this. It's just a classic example of where the individual components are registering with you more than they're registering with us. Partially mixed wise, but partially because of this idea of, of solidifying the melodies a little bit. The idea, the central idea. Okay? Keep on that. Yes, Matthew, let's listen to your piece. Oh, sorry. Too hip for the room. I don't know where. There you go. It's a classic example of if you're going to start doing this is the thing when you start to do a pseudo militaristic stuff or pseudo period stuff, you know, um, the rhythm that you've written for the snare wouldn't have been done for this type of style. It's 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 too hip. It's too hip for the room. And somehow we have an inherent sense of that, and so we keep forcing it to where it would be, and then it's not where it is, and it throws off our sense of the beat. for that Hans Zimmer thing? Because so, I think it follows the exact same structure. It's got to be. here as a development you have a lot better argument for this say this but we're I'm not I don't feel the connection I don't feel the through line I'm not sure where we are I'm not sure how much more of this piece is left um, good, good sounding template but um, I'm still I'm not I'm not I'm not connected I'm not connected um, and I heard you serving us. I heard you serving us that 
here we were into the, uh, wherever this was, um, you know, into the, where, where was this? One night, you know, 119, 120. I heard you serving the melody up again um, to help us uh, stay connected to it. So it's not that you're not doing that. Um, I, I just think that the entire purpose of this piece, just looking at the waveforms, is to get to this, we've got super bitey dissonances and then we resolve to the sixth, uh, which is not, uh, does not a piece make. And, it's, and, and shit, there are a lot of film scores today that thinks that's what it does. Um, mm, well, you know, this piece was inspired by Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, could have fooled me. I would like to hear you because you have some, you have some, you have some good sensibilities in there. I'd like to hear what you could do with "Twinkle Twinkle Little Star." I mean, "Twinkle Twinkle Little Star" would be good for you. Um, I don't have much to say, which is maybe says everything. Uh, although I again have a very strong feeling that this is not you. I don't know that I know you. We, we, we heard a couple of pieces by people tonight that unquestionably we walked away with an understanding of who they are as people, who they are as musicians, who they are as composers. And I think that that's, I think that's pr crucial. So my feeling on this piece in the end is that it's, um, it is a very straight ahead servicing, I'd be willing to bet large money that that was the, based on the entry to that bleeding fingers contest. Um, and if not, it's eerily similar. And if so, then you're sort of hamstrung from the beginning by, um, by the conditions of that. Um, so for everyone tonight, I mean, I especially, there, were, there was only a handful of cases in which I thought that, that I felt that the, um, you know, that seeding the idea and de developing it was truly, was truly happening. And I think all of us, all of us should be able to do that. We can make the argument about whether we will, whether we would, um, but but right now we all can't at will and so we have work to do and so let's continue to focus on that don't just don't get tired of your ideas don't think you've got to do more than you do and go back and listen again i cannot listen really listen and you will hear so many of these great ideas seeded clearly um and repeated in all of our favorite scores so The traditional Welsh lullaby written back in the Well, I believe you. Um, uh, I certainly believe you, which is funny uh, that it was based on that because, uh, uh, because the structure, uh, maybe, maybe somebody else took it from that. You know what I mean? Like, whatever. Um, a, lot of those, uh, a lot of those Welsh lullabies and, and, well, and, and the Celtic, there's a lot of cool stuff to mine in there. For, uh, for ideas. But again, it's, um, what just wasn't clear enough to me to hold it, to hold through. Um, let's close on, uh, since uh, we've heard, uh, since we are struggling with it, let's close with some master doing some of this. And I think what I'm going to choose in terms of developing a fantastic idea that's just amazing. Is a, of course I'm going to choose a Williams piece because it's, nobody does it better. Oh, well, I could have almost chosen a tombstone piece by Bruce Broughton, but I had already had my head set on this one. So let me do it. And somebody mentioned this earlier. Let's go out in terms of locking you in on an idea. On a, on a piece from John Williams, it's only two minutes and 50 seconds. It's from The Witches of Eastwick. It's the tennis game. And it is a fantastic, fantastic example of taking, you know, a concept, a simple concept, 
and really, really masterfully shaping it. And we'll see you next time. Devices repeating again and again.